Um, my piece is called Sleepover, and it's written um, from how I imagine my grandmother's point of view. My two teenage granddaughters are sleeping over tonight. I'm meeting them at a restaurant near my house. I see them walking toward me and smile automatically. They're chatting and giggling to each other, but wave enthusiastically. They're so modern looking, carrying their shopping bags and walking briskly down the street. I never went shopping when I was growing up, and never went out to dinner either. We didn't have money for those things. I grew up a street kid. I had a couple close girlfriends and we looked out for each other. I wasn't friends with these girls that come rushing down this block into my arms and devour me in hugs and kisses. We go inside and they announce that they're starving and need to order a lot of food. They are true to their word and plow steadily through blintzes and huge salads in almost complete silence. We get home and they're still hungry, so I give them jello and they proceed to empty my entire can of whipped cream on it. Sue needs to watch House at 9 o'clock, so we curl up on my bed with junior mints and involve ourselves in the dramas of a pregnant woman being operated on. They snuggle up with me while we watch, and I can't help wondering if I deserve the amount of affection my grandchildren give me. They show me the clothes they purchased that day. They glow as they hold up their colorful shirts, laughing together, speaking their own language and communicating without words. Then we talk about the upcoming summer. Tony is planning to go to Spain or Mexico and sue the summer camp. I spent summers at home or with my cousins at their house. We didn't travel or go to camp. Sometimes my mom would drop us at Rockaway Beach and leave me in the care of my older sister, Arlene. Arlene rarely paid attention to what I was doing, though. Once I went into the ocean and was hit so hard by a wave that knocked me unconscious. <laughs> Luckily, I was washed up to shore and woke up lying on the sand with no idea how I got there. <laughs> my children would never let that happen. They fuss even though their daughters are 15 and 16. We sit at the table and drink hot chocolate, and I watch as Sue and Tony empty my second can of whipped cream. When Grandpa Bob was alive, he used to make hot chocolate at Christmas, and I would watch as everyone sat around sipping away. My grandchildren always yelled at me to sit down and eat and let them serve everyone, but I was happy just to watch them enjoy themselves. Now I watch my grandchildren grow up, and I watch as my children grow up too. They never stop growing to me. I watch as my youngest granddaughter, Lucy, starts elementary school and my son learns to be a father. I watch proudly as my grandson, Nico, stars in his piano recital and gracefully accepts his compliments. I watch as Maciel graduates from NYU and Emma travels the world to follow her dreams. I watch as Benji streaks down the soccer field, scoring over and over again. I watch as my oldest daughter, Heidi, is diagnosed with cancer and loses all her hair. I don't watch passively. I share all their experiences with them. After Sue and Tony leave, I lay down on the bed feeling exhausted from a long and energy-filled night. I open a pack of junior mints and look at my photo-covered walls. I fall asleep feeling the absence of Bob next to me and admiring a grandchild's most recent drawing or story. I dream of soft birds soaring through the air while I circle around with ruffled wings, catching worms for them and listening to their songs. <laughs>